Hello, thank you very much for inviting me to give this brief speech. Uh, due to my profession, I'm a film journalist. I have the opportunity to travel abroad and visit different film festivals. Um, I'm also a law graduate, so I will concentrate on my exposition on three main topics in which the cultural concept of um, um, the cultural concept of uh, hegemony has been especially prevalent in reaching the objectives of the far left. Uh, unfortunately, Spain is not an exception when it comes to being overly dominated by political correctness and cultural Marxism, that it's so widespread in today's world. One of the limelights in Spanish media has been the question of refugees. Although the number of refugees fleeing to Spain has been really scarce compared to the numbers of other countries as, such as Hungary, Germany or Sweden, the attention to the media of to this topic has been huge. Broadly speaking, we can say that Spanish media have leaned towards political correctness and sentimentality when dealing with this stuff. Any attempt to streamline the arrival of uh, refugees in Europe has been depicted as a crime against human rights. Any attempt to screen refugees coming from travel hotspot places is regarded as xenophobic or directly as Islamophobia. According to the new left agenda that is so prevalent in Spanish media these days, there is no such a thing as illegal, illegal immigrants and things like controlling European borders or sensible immigration policies such as those enforced in places like Canada or Australia, are simply a crime for our, our media. Um, how does uh, the left uh, get the, the objective of presenting these sensible policies that were so, so natural to us 15 or 20 years ago as something as a crime against human rights? They use a concept that is called biopolitics that it's been really productive for their objectives and it's very rooted in the leftist uh, uh, literature. The concept of uh, neoliberal poly by politics uh, comes from a term that was created by the Swedish political scientist Rudolf Kislein, a concept that was created to support a racial concept of the state. Nevertheless, this notion, this notion was popularized among leftists by the French post-structuralist thinker Foucault. According to him, our contemporary policymakers deal with what he calls biopower. Biopower is for him a new way of political rationality concerned with every aspect of our lives. This idea was developed and improved by his followers, the Italian thinker Giorgio Agamben, who takes an old concept from the Roman law, that's bare life, to draw a comparison between what Nazis did in concentration camps and what uh, most Western democracies, such as the United States, uh, does uh, to fight against terrorism. And by the duo of Hart and Negri, that distinguish between biopolitics and biopower. Biopower is the tool that the empire, the term coined by him, to describe the neoliberal order uses to oppress the third war and the poor people in the war. And he uses another concept that is called biopolitics that is used to designate a new way of radical democracy that is, goes beyond the constraints of the rule of law. From their point of view, establishing borders is a way of exerting political power over a population that resembles the world excesses of the Nazi regime. Recently, there have been some riots in Spain in detention centers for illegal immigrations. The new left has demanded to shut them down as an expression of inhuman and degrading treatment with no further inquiry on what's, what, what's going uh, on then. Even in their new languages, they have created the new languages. There are no uh, things like emigrants or immigrants. They prefer to use the word migrants because they say they are no illegal people. And we are importing another concept taken from the United States, the idea of sanctuary cities, cities where uh, law is not enforced anymore. There are no immigrant people, so uh, our police cannot enter, cannot ask for papers. So, Another field in which uh, the Farlet um, has done a lot of harm using this idea of cultural hegemony, it's been cinema. 
Lenin stated that cinema is the most important art for us. Filmmakers such as Einstein and Budokin develop film theories with the sole purpose of agitation and propaganda. The new left that has nowadays on board filmmakers, like the Darden brothers, Ken Loach, Michael Moore or Oliver Stone, among others, has proved to be an outstanding disciple of this Soviet school in their dreadful depiction of capitalism, free markets and conservative ideas. Spain also has its own mourners of the misfortunes of global capitalism and conservative ideas. For instance, Pedro Almodovar, probably the most renowned Spanish filmmaker abroad, had spoken on several occasions against Christ Christian principles and the Partido Popular, our liberal conservative political party. Fernando León de Aranoa, one of the uh, youngest filmmakers in Spain, has recently made a documentary about Podemos, the political party that some of my mates have mentioned before, that represents the new left populism in Spain. That is a documentary that if you've seen it, that has nothing to envy to the triumph of the villains by Len Riefenstahl in its portrait of Podemos as the only political party that really represents the Spanish people and fights against what they call the caste, so the establishment. New left ideas are also absolutely prevalent in what is programmed in international film festivals these days. Rarely do films with conservative or liberal, in the European sense of course, ideals get chosen by selection committees in film festivals. For instance, in the last edition of the Toronto International Film Festival, one of the most prestigious in the world, the best Canadian film award was granted to a film that's called Toes Who Make the Revolution, a Marxist film that evokes Godard's La Chinoise, in the sense that it's a portrait of a fictional group of idealist students who plan to overthrow the Canadian government due to the increase of higher education teaching fees in 2012. This film glorifies the radical political rhetoric of the far left and draws illegitimate comparisons between uh, Western democracies and brutal governments. According to the jury, this film deserved the war for its uncompromising, electrifying portrait of youthful idealism and democratic exhaustion of contemporary Canada. This film contributes to convey the idea of a moral superiority of the far left over our declining liberal democracies. Paradoxically, after Image, the last film by the great Polish filmmaker, Baida, by far the, less, the best film in that uh, edition of the film festival, went completely unnoticed for the film critics. Probably you've seen it, in case you, you haven't. Um, after Image is a film that depicts with great crudity the last battle of an avant-garde painter, Stalinicinski, against Stalinism in Poland after World War II. An ideology, Stalinism, that opposed fiercely to any kind of art, formalism in the, in the case of the Polish painter, that didn't abide by the official doctrine of socialism realism. An uneasy topic, the excesses of Stalinism for those who still believe that communist utopia can be achieved by the sole strength of persuasion. And just to, to finish, I will go briefly over the situation in university in Spain. University in Spain is also heavily leaned towards far-left politics and its twin ideologies, gender ideology and multiculturalism. Spain has imported from the United States the idea of the free spaces within campus, an euphemism created by the new left to constrict freedom of speech, something that should be normal within an institution such as university, where confronting ideas and opinions have always been part of its nature. Nowadays, Spanish campuses are crowded with indoctrinated students in cultural Marxism that have declared war against anyone, scholars, politicians, journalists, who dare to give their own opinion on different matters that challenge their narrow-minded mentality that is so pervaded by gender ideology, multiculturalism, animalism, or any other kind of political correctness. Kevin Williamson, a uh, United States-based journalist, drew an analogy between this trend and what China went through during the Cultural Revolution in the 60s. What the Red Guards, those fearful followers of Mao, is now being carried out by what Williamson calls the New Pink Guards, a childish and pampered version of these fearful Red Guards, who cannot tolerate debate and confrontation of ideas, they simply prefer to ban any speech or debate that challenges the socialist prejudices. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much. Now, uh, I invite uh, Ms. Mrs. Esperanza Garcia 